Let's look back to last week's episode where we talked about technical drawing and how we use a box and its sides to project the product that we place within it. Since in drawing we rarely see more than three sides of an object, it is enough for us to concentrate on the front, top and the side view. Of course we can use any three adjacent side projections when we are working within a three quarter view, but for simplicity I use the ones you can see in the video. The other topic I want to touch on in this video is how to use measurements and approximate distance within perspective and 3D space. For that we are going to use our good friend the cube again. If we want to replicate this cube, the easiest way for that is to first find the center of the side we need. Uh, we can do that by drawing in the diagonals of that side and then we can estimate a line that is parallel or, since we are in perspective, is converging in the same vanishing point as the other two lines. Now, we can extend the horizontal edges of the cube and by drawing lines from the opposing corners through the vertical center of the edge, we create a new side which is the same exact size as our previous one but in perspective. This means that if I measure the literal distance of one edge to the other, they are not going to be the same. But this is because of foreshortening in perspective distances that are equal will seem larger when closer to the camera and smaller when further away. We learned this in perspective already, but it's good to remind ourselves every now and then. Knowing this little trick, we can replicate this side of the cube, thus building and measuring in perspective. Now let's put all of this into practice. Let's bring our fruit blender back from the previous how to draw anything video and instead of using cubes I am going to create a front, a side and a top projection. While I have not drawn it in, because these things are mostly happening in my head, you can draw the diagonals on the box you just drew around the mixer and define halves and quarters of the surface. This is basically creating the grid we talked about in one of the live streams. Make sure to click that little link that just popped up if you haven't seen that one yet because that's quite a useful video. It is important for you to understand how easy it is to create these grids by using the halving techniques we just talked about. After the grid is done around the object, we can do the projections. It is obviously not necessary to do these projections every time, but it is good for you to exercise this a couple of times, because by doing this you will gain a better understanding of the object you are drawing. If you pay attention to your distances and measurements, you should have quite a good approximation for your three side drawings. Another thing worth mentioning here is that, as you can see, the top of the blender is not visible at all and I had to recreate the top drawing from the knowledge that I got from the two sides. I also decided to not draw the lid and simplify the mouth of the blender to make my life easier. But you can see that with the information from the two sides, it is not that hard to recreate the top of the blender. I would recommend you take smaller household items that you actually have at hand in the house and draw them from the three sides. See how well you can capture each side and what information uh, helps you if you are trying to draw in perspective again. Once you have a clear view of how the object looks from the front, the side and the top, you will be able to recreate the object from any perspective you want using the halving techniques and the grids. You can see me redrawing the blender from a quite strong top perspective where we have a lot of foreshortening. While again I do most of the construction work in my head, you can see me at least defining uh, the halving lines of each side. I use those for measurement. I can estimate where the center point or the one quarter point of the halving line is and I can look at the original picture for reference to recreate what I am seeing in the new perspective. Let's have a more fun example than a simple fruit blender. How about a Pontiac GTO? As you can see I am creating a box around the car trying to find the halves and the quarters 
of that side to know where the elements of the car are. For example, you can see that the front tire ends at the first quarter line, meanwhile the back tire is almost exactly on the third quarter line. This information I can take with me even if the perspective changes. Since I am so used to doing these in my head, I drew the car without creating a bounding box around it, but to be able to explain it to you kind folks, I jumped back into the video and redrew it. So as you can see, I rotated the box that the car was around and just drew it into a different perspective with the same method that I had uh, drawn the car, the box around the car, I tried to find the center of the side and I half it and I'm going to try and find the centers of those two halves, thus getting the quarters. And then from here, as I said before, I'm going to try and identify what goes where. As you can see, the door sort of is on the center line, but it skews a little bit more towards the front. So I would say, Two thirds of the door are in the two quarter box and one third of the door is in the three quarter box. But then if we look at the tires, just as I said, I will draw the first tire touching the first quarter line and the second tire will be somewhat almost exactly in the third uh, quarter line. And then from there, I just try to follow the lines uh, that I see. The center line of the side box on the car is almost touching the tires and the shoulder line of the car is, I don't know, a little bit above that. So I'm just trying to recreate that uh, on my side of my box as well. And I use the same method for the front of the car too. The horizontal halving line is a bit below the hood line. So I take that information and apply it to the new perspective. And this is how I built the whole car. I recommend that beginners use rectangular products to exercise on because curves will take a whole lot more construction lines and for the first steps simple products like toasters, old cameras or old uh, more boxy cars are perfectly enough. The rest of the video is me drawing the car but as I said the bounding box for the new perspective is uh, within my head. Don't strive to not draw the bounding box. That will come naturally once you feel you understand the perspective and the proportions enough. Anyways, that was all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, hit that like button. And if you didn't, hit that dislike button, but also tell me what you didn't like so maybe I can fix it. If you want to exercise what you have learned here, you can join our Discord and share your process there. Link is in the description down below. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. And if you say you want to support me, you can find links to my Gumroad and masterclasses in the description down below as well. But as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.